right? Everything has to be locked in, your shoulders squared up, right? Your fingertips is there, right? You look, your elbows straight. Everything has to be perfect. Don't just chuck it up there. Make sure everything's perfect. Lock it in. You got 10 seconds. Okay, you're you're down by one, with with a, with a second left to go to overtime. So you gotta you gotta hit the shot or else you lose. You gotta tie it and go to overtime. You no know, one. You gotta hit it or else you lose. Back, 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 back. Game, let's go. You just lost in the trial. The guy's trying to take your spot, and you lost. That ain't it. This is this doesn't mean shit. I'm looking for guys that want to kill people, man. This is the last time I'm gonna have an opportunity to coach some of you guys on the home court. How you want to go out, it's all up to you. There's gonna be a crowd out there today. You're not doing it just for the crowd. Play for your family who brought you here. Play for your teammates who supported you every step of the way. Play for each other, play for yourself. Play because this isn't your identity, this is your DNA. You know, I went to one of the all-star games out there, and it was crazy just how athletic, how quick, how fast, how big, how strong these guys are, and you know, they haven't even committed to college yet. You know, I want to be that guy looking back, saying, oh, he's from Toronto, I seen him come up. Back in the days, <laughs> we take him here and oh. we hook shot him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we still do that nowadays. What do you mean, hook shot him? <laughs> no, no. The young guys don't have that. So, I mean, I think guys just broke down barriers after barriers. Oh, oh. And now, there's so much more opportunity to be seen out here in Canada. Toronto's, you know, one of the biggest cities in North America. And for such a long time, it was overlooked. Basketball in Toronto. Sky's the limit. We got so much talent. We've always had talent. When Toronto comes to the table, they bring with it a huge population and a huge private sector. Just the opportunity for more resources. I spoke to Bob Hurley Sr. And Coach Hurley's like, Phil, within the last five years, Toronto has produced more talent than New York City. He's like, what are you feeding all those guys? Right now on the basketball front, like we're like the biggest state in, in North America. What you see in Texas, what you see in California, you're starting to see in Toronto. The odds, I think we have a better chance of actually winning the real lottery than to put all these kids in the NBA in the last five years. Boom, then it goes one, and then you're like, all right, bang. What was it, next year? Andrew Wiggins go one. I think that just kind of like stamped it. It's a whirlwind, and then all of a sudden you got Jamal Murray coming up, and it's like, oh my gosh. Canadian right now, your percentage is probably better than somebody from another country. Like, we have the most athletes in the NBA other than the U.S. We give a lot of other kids in Canada hope. You know, this is a dream of mine my whole life, and uh, it's not going to be as surprising in the, in the next few years. It's all about belief. Sometimes it's not where you go, it's just, you know, how well you prepare for it and, and how many excuses you're gonna make for yourself. And that's probably the biggest thing. We've gone through the system. We know what it, what it is to make it now, and that's the difference. <laughs> These kids rightfully and beautifully think they belong from the earliest of stages. I went up, I just end up dunking it. Then it just ended up dropping 31 that game. That's when I felt like, yeah, like, I'm, I can play here. I feel like here right now is Andrew Wiggins, because I think I play like him. I shouldn't be scared of intimidated by anyone, because I can play with everyone across the country. I played a little bit of one-on-one -on -one against Jamal Murray one time. He beat me, like, 7-1, to one, but, like, it was kind of cool knowing that, like, that's what finished product of a high school star looks like. That's where I got to be. Motion! Corey Joseph, Corey went to the same high school that I went to. Like, see, like, those guys make it. I think it's like, like, I could do that too.
The last time I've been was 24 years since I've been, yeah. Because, and I've gone to Jamaica, I've gone to Cuba, I've gone to Dominican, I've gone to, I haven't gone back home. These guys are way ahead. When I started, it was just myself and my boys going to the gym. We didn't have no YouTube to look at. We didn't have a dad who knew the game. So he's way ahead of where I was at that age. I got Thursday and Friday. It's good. Like just drop in. Like nah, you're gonna have to play a bear game. Drum Rocker is a big tournament. It's like, it's like the biggest 40 ball. teams in there. You know what? It's very similar to music, what happened with basketball in this country. Sometimes you have to have like actual geographical, cataclysmic, crazy things that happen that produce these amazing gems. My dad came here from Jamaica. My mom came here from Jamaica. My dad was a DJ. And there's just certain sounds, vibes that I grew up with that represented this kind of island energy within the city. Like those are the things that, that influenced a lot of us to let us know, yo, you could be who you are and just be proud of it and, and rock. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica and came at the age of 11. It was, it was a, kind of a mixed emotion because I was, I was raised by my grandma and I was meeting my mother for the first time. Coming to this country, I saw all the lights. It was beautiful. I was ecstatic. Pierre Trudeau was in power at that time and he was able to bring up a lot of immigrants from the Caribbean and giving them opportunity. All of my friends are first generation Canadians. This was a sport that you kind of took up because um, it wasn't hockey, right? When I was 12, I scored three goals and we won the playoff game. And after the game, none of my teammates or the coach acknowledged that at all. After that, I was like, okay, I'm done with this hockey thing. I gotta find something else. We all played in the same place, down in uh, George Brown College. Sometimes Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. If you played basketball in Canada and you came to Toronto, you came to, to the gym. I met some other guys at George Brown, a guy named Simeon Morris. And he brought me to play with the older guys. And I had good success. I was scoring against them. I was dunking on them. And they were just showing me love, right? So it was just, I had so much support. There's Dixon again, and he's not good again. Is he going to be effective with the three-point line implemented next year? We had a guy named Philip Dixon, who was the best player in Canada at the time, and coaches came up to see him play. For a Canadian high schooler, he is soaring to new heights. Not surprisingly, he was recruited by almost 80 U.S. schools. Phil Dixon was getting a scholarship. Mark Hunt was getting a scholarship. That's what we saw. So we thought that it was feasible. We can get a scholarship. But the NBA thing, that's a whole nother level. And that's what's uh, the difference between now and then. Some of the snobby Americans be like, ah, oh, it's Canadian, like, when I went to the CP3 camp in, in America, they were like, oh, you're from Canada? You're from Toronto? Okay, whatever. I was like, all right, I'll see you tomorrow on the court. Like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm human just like you, let's go. But it's just like, you just gotta keep that mentality of just going at everybody. Yeah. My 100% dream is to play Division I basketball, 100%. And I feel like with Vidal and, and Norman Kings, like, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to get there. If we do everything correctly, then Everything should be fun and everybody will get a solid show. That Thursday night run, if you can play on Thursday night here at Easter, back when I was here, it means you can play. I was really inspired by Colin Charles because he lived in the building next to me. When I saw him make the front page of the sports section or sign the St. John's, maybe you want to pursue basketball. There's no happier moment to know that you signed a scholarship and you fulfilled one of your dreams. Jamal McGlure, his jersey was retired. When I got to Eastern Commerce is when I really started to understand how intense I had to get and how hard I had to work in order to want to play at the next level. We gotta be disciplined. Help some guys out there with their heads. Help some guys out there with their heads. We were surrounded by teachers that cared about us, and we kind of just continued to focus at the task at hand and plug away. Ask myself, 
what would be the best place to get me to the NBA. And I came to the conclusion that it was Kentucky, and that's why I chose Kentucky. Oh, Jamal's like the foundation, man. A guy right from the city that we know, going to Kentucky. I mean, my friend Trevor, he had Rick Pitino in his house cooking dinner for him on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it was amazing. There was no belief that we could actually make it to the NBA. And with Jamal making it, just made everyone have that belief. Yeah, I see that point, Vic. Come on. Come on, I've been coming to the game since I was like five. Oh, Rev. No. Rev. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. Let's just say, you gotta start thinking like you're my height now. Like, that's what you see DeRozan doing these pull ups. It's like, you know what I'm saying? True, so. Play with Kyle Lowry, starts thinking like, yo, yeah. okay, maybe if I'm not as big, how am I gonna score? You know what I mean? It's true, so. I'm telling you, bro. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, the Raptors are born. Not that those are the greatest seats, but just to be in the environment and just to say you was at a Raptor game, it's becoming, you know, kind of like a cult following. You know, when I got there, it was, it was, it was, it was just coming above the surface. The, the seeds had been planted, you know what I mean? Collector's item, two more programs, $10. Putting basketball in people's living rooms every night, getting an intimate look at what the NBA is and what it takes to be a winning basketball team and franchise. What that's done for kids and coaches and the willingness and desire to be a basketball player instead of a hockey player, these are some pretty monumental building blocks. I give Vince Carter a lot of credit. I think that's when Canadian boys and girls were like, you know what, basketball is cool. Let me put this hockey stick down and, and, and check this out. Just the way he dunked, the whole insanity era, he just made them fall in love with the sport at a time when the country was still trying to get to know the sport. He was a big inspiration, to, you know, for me and the kids that, you know, I grew up with. Among several off-season moves, the Raptors added Toronto's Corey Joseph. I look at Corey playing, I'm like, wow, can you imagine? Like, he's home playing for the Raptors. And I'm sure someone thought back in 95, 96, like, whoa, look, Colin Charles is playing on St. John. So what's going to happen 10 years from now? Like, it's just a cycle that just gets a little bit better as time goes on. Oh, see, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is me. Unfortunately, put it, put this ugly picture up here. I see. Be there for life. Yeah. Boss staff was unbelievable. You know, Ro made sure that gym was always open for us. You know, Denim and all the older guys would be there. And you knew you go in there, you had to bring your A game. Because if you go to Falstaff and you have a bad run, they gonna tell the whole city. <laughs> When I look at, you know, the basketball in the city, Ro, to me, he kind of like a pioneer of it. I think that he opened doors for guys, and when he opened doors for guys, it seemed like they just took off with it. Back in the 80s and 90s, um, there was very little diversity in the uh, coaching staffs and the management of the, the different governing bodies. A lot of the players I had didn't like that, so I supported them and said, okay, I'm gonna find a different way. For you to get where you wanna go to, let's find a different road there. AU at the time was frowned upon, you know, because everyone felt that, you know, you should play for your high school team, and, you know, high school was first and foremost. AU basketball was a bunch of club teams, and we would all come together and have tournaments throughout the summer across the U.S. in the hopes of, you know, getting some type of exposure. Disney had a Nike tournament, and my college coach, he saw me there, and uh, essentially ended up getting my scholarship that weekend. AU provided that. Will Russell, Grassroots Canada, with Tristan Thompson, Corey Joseph, Mike Kabongo, Brady Heslip, Dwight Powell. They basically went into the States and won the best of the best tournaments and did a Super 64 in Vegas. His taking a team down there and winning a big tournament like that, it put us on the map. When we went to tournaments like that, nobody knew us. We used to be like, all right, guys, let's go out there and take some names, because that's how we felt. We had a huge chip on our shoulder. 
our 08 season when we won Vegas and we were ranked number one in America as the best AU team out of Canada. You know, at some point, some other teams gonna come and really, you know, be compared in that light. Trace where most of the young Canadian superstars get their start, and you end up here. Brampton, Ontario, in the basketball factory known as CIA Bounce. Andrew Wiggins, Xavier Rathan Mays, Tyler Ennis. You had high major level talent coming off the bench. Basketball back then, it was missing the organization. It was missing the opportunity to play against the best. Nike then created the EYBL. I think we started out 15 and now we were one of the only undefeated team on the UIBL circuit. And then you started to realize, okay, this is a little bit crazy when you're showing up to games and kids are asking to sign their jersey that they're just about to wear in a game. And it was kind of like, okay, this is starting to really change now. Now these shoe companies, you know, kind of give some money to the teams to be able to attend those tournaments. Because Nike stepped up and said, we're going to start this new elite league for these Nike teams and we're going to sponsor them all this money and give them all this gear. Now, it forced Adidas and Under Armour to jump into that, that world. People have no idea how expensive it is to fund a program, to put teams on the road and do it the right way. In a AU season ends up costing about 50000 I know how difficult it is to, to get onto a shoe circuit, and once you have it, you gotta work to keep it, because everyone wants it. These shoe circuits, they've recreated an experience that these kids, you know, crave for. They wanna play in the, you know, bright spotlights, you know, have so many different coaches come watch and play, you know, have a, you know, X amount of fans. Uh, play in front of, you know, televisions or whatever, you know, an experience that is, it was impossible. You know, you, it's never been like this before. I think I'll lie to you if I say I don't like the shoe sponsorship. Like, I love it, to be honest. But I know it's just, it's just a shoe sponsorship. Like, we're the same team with, with or without it. I call it clout, like, you know, like, for the fame and stuff like that. Like, you know, just to say you have it, to say, like, I'm so good that I have this. Like, you know, just to say I have it doesn't prove anything. Hey, four men to the away screen. Attack, 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 attack. The game has grown. The game's more popular. The game's better in a lot of ways, there's more kids playing. You know, the rise is not just in NBA players, it's, it's across the board, we have better coaches and opportunities. So it's pretty wholesome, I think, but it's also a big business and with big business come pitfalls and all the other trappings and trying to navigate that for our kids is, is something that we gotta continually keep an eye on. The shoe company will be like, if you get that kid, we'll outfit your entire team, plus we'll give you 50 grand. So. That's the game. It's a huge business. The downside to it is you end up misguiding a lot of kids. You end up playing with their dreams. That's pretty dear to my heart. I know exactly what it feels like to be that age and have hoop dreams. Put him in a shoe program now, so then when he gets to college, we'll send him to the same school. And then when he gets to the pros, we'll try to push the sponsor on him. To me, it's like a $40 million slave. You got the masters, the plantations, people taking care of the crops. The high-end people that are making the money, we don't never see them. We never see them. Right now, you got a bunch of people that got tournaments, right? And then you got a bunch of people that, that's trying to piggyback those tournaments and say, well, man, I can make a little bit of money off this tournament. Let me get this tournament going on. And then this guy over here is saying, well, shoes, okay, we got this tournament going on, man, let's create a scouting service. Okay, now we can get the scout. And it's just, it, 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 from that standpoint, it, to me, it's killing, it's killing the art. Miles Kanye Dare has been selected for the 2017 Futures game. I was, I was like shocked. Things are going so quickly, I don't think I've had a time to like really reflect on like how crazy this has been. Understand a lot of what's coming at you is like, you know, professionals. Because those same people are coming after you? 
once something happens, they're gone. I tore my ACL last year. Like, everybody forgot who I was. That's all it's like. Once you have people that you can trust, and you know those people will always be there, those are the people like, you really gotta listen to. In the 90s, back then it was really simple. I knew I had to go to Eastern Commerce. Once I'm at Eastern Commerce, this is what you do at Eastern Commerce. You go to ABCD camp. Once you go to ABCD camp, you get recruited, you get your scholarship, hopefully you pass your SATs, you're off. Now, too many people wearing hats, there's too many advisors. But I don't know if I would have excelled in this era. It's definitely the stage is bigger. Cordell's doing big time, man. By the end of this weekend, I expect him to pick up one, two, maybe even three offers. Yeah, it's a big year for him, man. Sometimes I feel like I should have it, but I know, but for me to get to Division One, that I need to trust the process. Like, don't think about the outcome. Think about just working hard. I wanted to go to first school in the States because I live in Canada, because in the States, there's more opportunities. The biggest thing is trusting people. You trust what they're selling, right? Because everybody's selling something. Keon's a shorter player, but his heart is so big, and if he can learn the things he has to learn at his size, then I don't see why he couldn't play Division One. I always keep in the back of my mind that my mom's counting on me to get a scholarship, so that's all I think about when I get tired, that's what I think about. So my mom don't gotta pay for my education anymore. They announced my name. It's just like a weird feeling that just went through my body. I didn't really believe until I actually saw it with my own eyes. Like, now I started to think, like, maybe I can actually do something with this game. If he's the best sixth grader, what's the plan for him to be the next seventh grader, the best eighth grader, the best ninth grader, the best tenth grader, to be number one all the way through? It's crazy, but we just gotta take it each day for each day. And just remember, he's a 12-year-old kid and he just gotta be a 12-year-old kid. Only certain kind of kid could embark on this adventure. Elijah is ready for the bright lights and the camera. He kind of has accepted the enormity of it. This could change his life, his family's life, his future kid's life, his future grandkid's life, his future great-grandkid's life, you know what I mean? He could impact a whole country.